Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to today's uh, session. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch and uh, I see that you've answered the poll. So thank you so much for that. I'm going to keep it around so that um, others can also um, take part. Okay, so this is a continuation of uh, yesterday's session, which was about creating videos. For those of you who missed it, here's a little uh, more about it. Okay, we talked about uh, videos as a way to uh, connect with uh, students, but not only for teachers to connect with students, but also for students to connect with one another, as well as uh, with the teacher. I'm just going to go over these uh, very briefly. So the connection was basically uh, between teachers and students and students and teachers where teachers provide the content if you want to start that way and students ask for help and support or you can start off where students uh, actually ask to learn about uh, different resources and the teachers provide the support. Then we uh, discussed a little bit how learning takes place with the teacher versus students and content and support where uh, teachers can either start out with instruction and provide a demonstration or the students can come up with a problem and ask for support. I then went on to uh, share Jing, one of my favorite uh, screencasts, ways that I uh, screen shoot uh, images and then add them to uh, PowerPoint slides. Just like this one, this is uh, by Jing. I don't know if you're familiar with Jing. And then uh, I went on to talk about Screener. Screener is a way to screencast videos through uh, the internet. You can use PowerPoint presentations, anything actually that's on your screen, and you can share that with students. I also mentioned Screencast-O-Matic, which is completely free. You can use uh, the tools for something like uh, $30 for three years or $15 a year, and then you can also upload it for free to uh, YouTube. Uh, here are the, uh, okay, a little bit on that. Okay, so uh, if you don't pay the pro, maximum is 15 minutes, but if you pay for the pro, you can actually uh, record a class, a, an hour class, such as this one, if you're using Windows, but not if you're using a Mac. So a little bit about that. We talked about that. Then we talked about TipCam, which is also for um, Windows. If you're using Windows, it's completely free. But there's also a Pro that I think is about $20. But if you want something that's really free and you're using a Mac, you don't have to pay anything. If you use QuickTime, and then you can actually uh, create movies, um, just uh, record your voice or the screen as you go. And this is completely free on a Mac. It comes with the Apple Mac. And then upload to YouTube. Vimeo, because in some countries uh, YouTube is not available, or Blip TV. Of course, you can also use Camtasia, which costs $100 for Macs, a lot more for Windows, and then you can record a WizIQ class or any other live classroom. With a PC, again, it's TipCam or Screencast-O-Matic for Windows, or if you're using a Mac, it's Camtasia or uh, as I said before, 
you can use QuickTime for completely free. And that's what we talked about yesterday and today. So are you ready? I see that um, one more person has joined us. So welcome. Uh, just to remind you, uh, this is part of the course. The course is for teachers who are interested in uh, using technology. So there's one course called Teaching with Technology. Another course is called Blending and Flipping with Technology. The difference is that Teaching with Technology is for beginners and Blending and Flipping is for teachers who already are teaching and uh, they'd like to know how to blend and flip their classes with technology. So videos are really, really important. And uh, there's been lots of studies on the value of using videos. So it's a good idea for teachers to learn how to use videos and practice using them. And uh, you'll learn what you will do during the week but also for students. So if teachers use them, it's a good way to model. It forces students or learners to actually teach. Hello, Harriet. Uh, teach through uh, using videos. So uh, we're going to continue here as people trail in. So there's an article that I think you will find interesting. It's online. And if you go into the uh, chat box, you'll be able to see a link to the tutorial. It's also available in the course, but I'm going to put it in the uh, chat box again. So here it is. Okay, that's a link to the videos. Everything is clickable um, in the PowerPoint presentation. So you'll be able to do that later on. And you'll notice if you go into the PowerPoint presentation, which uh, I'm going to do right now. Okay, I'm going to uh, screen share and take you there. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Those of you who have never used WizIQ Live class, you're invited to do so. It's a great way to uh, improve your instruction and it's a great way to interact with uh, colleagues and students. Okay, so um, let me screen share. Okay, so you should be seeing the screen in a couple of uh, seconds. Okay, so here is the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And if you um, go through it, everything is clickable. It's not clickable in the uh, live online class on the whiteboard, but it is clickable here. So if you go through it, you'll be able to go to the courses. Okay, so if you cl click on Teaching with Technology, this is the course. It's completely free. Okay, so you click on it, and you'll be able to get into the course. Now, what you notice about the course, and this is important, there's something called the course. This is the class right now. There's the course feed where you can start a discussion or respond. You'll also be able to, this is on the top left, you'll also be able to go into the courseware and get all the tutorials, which are PowerPoint presentations, or in this case, a YouTube video. Okay, so these are the uh, tutorials. There are a lot of them. And then if you go into classes in the courseware, you'll get a chance to see uh, some of the past classes. Okay, you just click on any past class and you'll be able to uh, get the recording and you view everything in your browser. You don't have to download anything. All right, so if you go into um, today's session, it's called Creating and Uploading Videos to YouTube. 
And yesterday's session, if you'd like to see that, you click on the class and it'll come up. Okay, so you'll see the video. It says View Recording. You click on that and then you'll be able to access the class. Okay, so it's coming up now. Okay, it'll take as long as it takes, depending on your connection at the time. But here you can see the application is starting. If you're on a Windows system, it'll be a lot faster and easier. Right now, most things are for the uh, one. Okay, so here it is. You'll have a chance to see it. This is the class, and these are the PowerPoint Hello, presentations. Welcome. welcome, everyone, uh, and I'm really, really grateful. Okay, so I'll stop that. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so that's this class, and let's go back to uh, the other one. The other one is Blending and Flipping with Technology. That's the other course. Notice here is a copy of the course. Okay, you have to differentiate Hello, between and a course welcome, welcome on everyone. IQ uh, and a live online really, class. Really classes grateful. are here, 20 classes, tutorials. Notice you can also um, connect with the learners. Okay, they're all here. You can click on their names. I see Susanna's here. Welcome, Susanna. Good to see you. And you see some of the other, and their countries, of course. All right, so this is a chance to uh, collaborate with others from around the globe. Notice here that uh, you can also leave the course if you're not happy with it. And you can also set the course settings at the top right. Okay, notifications if you want to get notified. If you don't want to get notified, you can unclick those. Okay, as I said, you can, you're welcome to start discussions or respond to whatever is there. You notice here I added a, uh, a video. You can also add to your account. Now, if you're not a teacher and you'd like a free account, please contact me and I'll... Um, Make sure that you get a free account. If you look to the left, you'll see that you've got a list of courses, some courses that you give, these are my courses, and some courses that you participate in. Okay, so these are the courses that I have created. Okay, in addition, courses you are enrolled in. Okay, these are courses that I'm enrolled in, and it's divided. Okay, courses I created. You can also get a course widget, which you can add to your, okay, you simply copy it, the script, and add it to your blog or website. Okay, so uh, let's go back here to, uh, okay, back to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so this is a PowerPoint. Now, I was telling you, if you click on this, most of the images that I've created are created through Jink. If you click on it, it'll take you to the article. This is an excellent article on the value of videos. It was created, I mean, by Daniel L. Schwartz and Kevin Hartman from the School of Education at Stanford. Okay, and then you have some information. And the title is, It's Not Television Anymore, Designing Digital Video for Learning and Assessment. Now, this is really um, a good article to give you an idea. Okay, it's got about 25 pages, I believe. And uh, you can get the link. Okay, here is the link. I can also get it. Okay, there is the link. You can get the link by simply going into... Again, the tutorial, Videos for Instruction and Learning, by clicking on it, and then you get the link. You can also respond here by adding your comments. Let's go on. You can also download the PowerPoint presentation by going into Download. Okay, next. Okay, this you cannot click on, but we will be going through this. I'll be explaining. Here is a YouTube video. If you click on it, it'll take you to the video. Okay, here is the YouTube video that we'll be sharing in a minute. Okay, in addition, oh, let's go back. Okay, the next one is another video. And then again, these are the two links. All right, so let's go back to class. 
stop screen sharing. Okay, so let's continue. So this is a great article from Stanford University on designing digital video for learning and assessment. There are lots of other articles. I found this one very, very useful because it discusses assessment. And you can have assessment, peer assessment, where students assess one another. You as a teacher can do it. If you've got a large class, like I have, most of my classes are really huge, I get students to work in teams of even 13 on each team, and then they assess one another. It makes my work easier, but it, more than that, it makes uh, their learning more meaningful. So you can learn from the videos that you create. So if I'm going to uh, watch this video later on, or the recording of Wiz IQ of this class, I will learn a great deal. So documenting your teaching. Every class that you give on Wiz IQ, you should watch the recording and record it using either Camtasia, if you're on a Mac, or uh, for free, QuickTime. If you're on a Windows, you can use, again, TipCam, or you can use Screencast-O-Matic, and the Pro, of course. Okay, and then another reason why you can find value in videos is that you you can document student interactions. You can create a video in your class, physical class, or again, an online class, by watching how students interact. And this is really important because the more interactions you have in a face-to-face -face classroom, the more learning most likely your students will be engaged in. If you're using a live online class, you might want to uh, take a look at the chat and see, uh, encourage people to use the chat. Now, in this class, I have not done so. I have not, uh, but I usually do. I usually get uh, the chat very, very active and encourage everybody to uh, connect, to tell us where they're from. Guadeloupe is uh, a regular in most of my classes, so she knows that uh, I usually ask everybody to introduce themselves. Okay, so that's a great way of learning. Also, the chat offers uh, students a chance to uh, speak during uh, a live class because in the face-to-face -face class, you, we don't allow our students to speak, but online, it's encouraged. So the more you interact, the more you add your comments, reflections, and so on in the chat, the better you will sustain learning. And that's what it's all about. It's about sustaining learning. Even as teachers, we want to learn from what we do. You also get class dynamics, which is really, really important, and class management. How are you managing your classes? You may come out of a class and feel, that was terrible, <laughs> uh, because everybody was making a lot of noise and they weren't getting anything done. But if you record that class, you will find some interesting things. What you thought was really negative may turn out to be very, very positive. So it's really important to be objective. And the only way you can be objective is if you record your class. So videos are a great way to uh, observe what's going on and, uh, and see whether things were the way you thought they were. So observing is really important because you can assess yourself as a teacher, you can assess your students, they can assess themselves by observing, but we never know until we actually see a video of what's going on. So again, document teaching, document student interactions, class dynamics, and class management. Now here's a YouTube video on how to upload to YouTube. YouTube keeps changing because Google now owns, of course, YouTube, and Google is forever becoming better and better for educators and for students to learn and share information. So let's take a look at this very short video, okay, on how to upload a video to YouTube. Tutorial. I'm going to show you how to oh, sorry. Video. That's not the one. 
Uh, let me try that again. That was the wrong one. Okay, I never know where I put this, but that wasn't the right one. This is the right one. Hey everyone, I'm Ali, and welcome to How To YouTube. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the process. This tutorial, I'm going to show you how to utilize Vimeo. Now, you may think that producing a video is the most important aspect, but it's really only the beginning to a successful video. Before you upload a video, you'll want to set your view. Hey everyone, I'm Ali, and welcome to How To YouTube. <laughs> In this episode, I'm going to discuss the process of uploading and publishing your videos while engaging with your audience. Now, you may think that producing your video is the most important aspect, but it's really only the beginning to a successful video. Before you upload a video, you'll want to set your default settings. The easiest way to do this is to click on the video manager, then click on channel settings and finally click on defaults. By setting the defaults tab, you'll be saving yourself a lot of time in the future. Under defaults, you'll want to set your privacy tab to private. This will ensure that you have everything correct before you publish or go live with your video. If your channel falls under entertainment, then you should set the category to entertainment. License should almost always be set to standard YouTube license. I never set a default for my title because it's pretty obvious that I won't be uploading content that has the same title each time. In the description section, you'll want to add all necessary information that you want to see for your uploads. For example, a link to subscribe to your channel or multiple links to your social media. Again, this will save you time during each upload. In the default tag section, you'll put all the tags that pertain to your channel and channel's content. Under comments and responses, check what you want users to be able to do. Allow comments, vote on comments, and so on. Make sure if you are monetizing your videos to check all the boxes under claim video and ad formats. Now, if you don't own the content or have the rights to upload it, don't check these two boxes. These are the basics when setting your All right, tab. so that was an example this will make your uploading of much a video. More efficient and effective. Okay, that was okay. a great example these tips help of you guys how get more you views can create and subscribers. If there's any topics that you'd like to see covered in the video. show, please okay, leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Until let's next get time, back I'm Ali, to... and this has been How To YouTube. Okay, we're going to go back here uh, to the next one. So the next one is Vimeo. And you might be wondering, what's the difference between Vimeo and YouTube? Well, YouTube is really, really popular. But the quality may not be that great when compared to Vimeo. So Vimeo has a great quality. So let's take a look at uh, this YouTube video on how to upload to Vimeo. Are you ready? Okay, so let's take a look at the next slide. The next one. Okay, let's see if I can uh, get the next one going here. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, add them to the chat. For some reason, I am not able to. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go through uh, the screencast here to the video. Okay, so I can share, get the link again because I seem to have um, lost it. But you can get, okay, let me um, go back to class and see why I'm not able to, uh, okay. All right, for some reason I'm not able to uh, get this going, but you can get it from the, um, again, from the link okay to uh, the tutorial and that should be just fine okay so again the reason why you might want to um, use a video is that you can learn so much from simply creating videos 
and that's what you're going to do. In the week, you're going to create a video of yourself. Yes, a bio. And um, you can make it as exciting and as creative as you wish because that's what you want your students to do eventually. So think of uh, maybe creating PowerPoint presentations of yourself. Uh, if you've got a website or blogs or everything about you, you can get images, photos, you can scan them if they're uh, offline or whatever you have online. Get your Facebook up there, everything about you. You probably have images on your Facebook and screen share using Screencast-O-Matic, using um, QuickTime Player, TipCam, Camtasia if you like, or Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, and then um, simply upload it to YouTube or you can upload it to Vimeo and share the link and you'll be sharing the link in either one of these courses, Teaching with Technology, or Blending and Flipping with Technology. You can choose which one you'd like to use. All right, so now we've got time for questions. So if you could add your questions in the chat, I'm going to bring that up right now. Okay, so any questions so far about the assignment? Okay, feel free to add them to the chat. Those of you who came in late, uh, feel free to join the courses. You've got the links there. You can copy the chat and uh, join the courses and ask your questions in the course feed.